Coach Hughes here from Jackson State Football. We're just going to open up the floor for questions. Coach. You all you had the third scrimmage a couple of days ago. Just recapped it. What really stood out to you on third scrimmage? Well, uh, it was uh, the efficiency of our offense. I mean, we played great defense. Uh, didn't give up but a couple of touchdowns, and uh, the, there was some great uh, red zone scoring. I think we were uh, like 90% in the red zone, and our plan to win is as a team is to play great defense, and playing great defense is not uh, sometimes uh, how many points you score, but it is the productivity of the team. So I look at it from the team perspective in that we had no turnovers, uh, we scored about 90% of the time in the red zone, and uh, there were several sustained drives where we flipped field position, and I think that's the type of team that we are, is the type of team that uh, can win in the kicking game, can play great in the red zone, don't turn the ball over, and play uh, error-free football. I think we'll be uh, very competitive this year. What are your thoughts on the quarterbacks, you know, having a chance to scrimmage in the books and having a chance to look at the table? Well, uh, I think that uh, all four have played well. Again, it goes back to all four have different attributes that can contribute. And I think uh, before the season is over, all four will play uh, a role or a significant role in, in, uh, in our team. And uh, we're still on the verge of naming a starter before the uh, first game. And uh, so we may even name one next week to kind of take the pressure off everybody. And uh, the one that we choose will know that he's the guy. And, and then uh, everybody else, we can kind of line up and let's get ready to go play. What are just going to be some of the kind of the factors or some maybe some of the criteria you're going to look at in this possibly final week before naming this number? Well, it, it, it is the uh, direction of the offense, uh, the efficiency. Again, it is uh, being productive, not turning the ball over, not making silly mistakes or silly penalties that can cost you a football game. I mean, or how concerned are you about, you said all four of them might play significant time this year, may play a significant role. How concerned are you about rotating guys in and out? I mean, I know last year it was a carousel. Um, and, I mean, did you think that affected your rhythm at all? And are you worried about getting back into that? Well, last year I think we were trying to find an identity of who we were. And uh, we finally settled on uh, Marikawa because he just didn't turn the ball over and just gave us a chance to hang in there to the end of the game. Of course, his style of play was not conducive uh, to the conference because he was a drop back passer and not a runner in the, in the whole league uh, has athletic quarterbacks that can run and get out of trouble. And, uh, but this year that's different because each, even though each one has a different skill set, uh, they're all athletic quarterbacks that can get us out of trouble. So when I say that, I'm taking in consideration injuries or um, different circumstances that may happen during a season. And, you know, you go into a season with four quarterbacks, you really don't know what's going to happen by the end, especially if you're playing athletic quarterbacks that are going to get hit at different times. And you, you put in quarterback run game. Uh, where they have to run the quarterback read option and different things like that. So you could have, you know, even last year, um, you had uh, Jordan Williams to go down in the first game. Now you're down to three. You had uh, Ivy coming off in, uh, injury riddle season and an injury riddle career, and you didn't know how long he was going to last. And now you're down to two before you can blink your eye and then Maricara with his concussion issues. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say all four may play because, you know, you think about it last year, we played Britt Lyles, we played uh, uh, the kid that transferred to, to Southwest, Juwan Adams. We played uh, Jordan Williams, who only played uh, one or two snaps. And, uh, uh, and then, you know, so every quarterback that was on the roster, even not by design, but forcibly, had, and, and even the year before, uh, Toward the end of the year, Jordan Williams ends up uh, winning the Valley game uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Ivy had went down with an injury and then Britt Lyles with the hip injury. So you can never have not enough quarterbacks, and they all got to be ready to play because you just really know, never know when that time is going to come. Davis Williams has a really live arm. Can you talk about is it, is it kind of risk-reward with, with playing a freshman? Uh, you know, there will be some things from him from uh, – 
from a maturity and a uh, experience standpoint when you throw one in there. But uh, sometimes the only way you can find out is what they can do. If they do everything in practice and you feel confident in them, uh, give them the ball and give them an opportunity to go play. What are your thoughts about the defense at this point of camp compared to the beginning? I mean, how much growth are you seeing, especially with, with so much depth you guys have to work with there? Well, I, I think that uh, the first, uh, the, the three scrimmages that you've noted, um, our defense has played exceptionally well. And if we are able to play that type of defense that we have displayed so far in training camp, um, if we are able to play that type of defense uh, once we get into conference play, we, we expect to be one of the top defenses in the conference, which gives us a chance to win every game. And with depth, we can rotate guys in and out, especially in the D-line uh, position. Uh, there's still some question marks in the secondary. It looks like we're going to have to play some young kids, maybe even some true freshmen will get playing time back there as backup roles. Uh, one of them, Markel Gladney from Jackson Callaway, has really had a great training camp. And, you know, he's got uh, the swag and the confidence that uh, he can go out there and play. So, uh, but he has to. He's forced into a role. It's not something that, that we don't have a choice uh, in the matter. But, uh, uh, but I've got confidence in playing freshman. Um, Ryan Thayart started as a true freshman last year, and hopefully, you know, we think that he has a chance to be one of the better corners in the in the league this year. So, I think our front line players have experience, but the back line uh, don't. But the deepest position is the uh, defensive line and linebackers. And if you want it to be deep anywhere, that's where you would want to be deep. You mentioned you know, possibly playing all four quarterbacks. What's the situation looking like now, running back? Well, running back is, uh, you know, of course, Jordan Johnson, uh, you know, returns. And then uh, you've got Terrell Kennedy that can do a lot of different things. I mean, he's kind of that slash guy that you can put out at receiver. You can motion him into the backfield. He can line up in the backfield and motion out to receiver. You can throw him bubble screens. You can throw him screens. He can run the ball up inside. So he's more of a dual threat type of guy uh, where Jordan, you know, established himself last year as the running back. And then uh, the young kids, uh, Keyshawn Hopper, uh, Quentin Brown, who has really surprised everybody uh, with his quickness and his, and his durability and change of direction. So um, we have several running backs and, and, you know, you need that during a season. And, and if uh, uh, we're going to have success there, it's going to have to start with uh, Jordan Johnson and Terrell Kennedy. Talk about taking the right kind of transfers. Has Deion Pope turned out to be the right kind of transfer? Well, yes. For us, you know, he's a Mississippi kid. He's from right down the road. Jackson State has had uh, tremendous tradition from Collins. Uh, when you talk about Chris Burkett, one of the best receivers to ever play here uh, from Collins. And, uh, you know, with, with uh, my, uh, I guess, uh, being familiar with him and, and Coach Robinson being familiar with him, I think it's been a great fit. Uh, he seems happy and he seems to enjoy Jackson State and love his experience here so far. So just got to get him to the field September 2nd. Is going to play a pretty big role for you? Uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Uh, how are we looking injury-wise? You got any starters out? I mean, anybody like that? Uh, Khalil, Khalil Johnson got a little banged up in the scrimmage last week. Uh, Ramon Ward uh, went down with an ankle injury. Uh, we think both of those guys will be okay. Uh, you know, just your normal bumps and bruises from training camp. You know, we, we hit a lot, and we had three scrimmages. So you were hoping to keep everybody 100% healthy, but sometimes in a collision sport, it doesn't happen like that. So it gives us about two weeks to get everybody healed and mended and hopefully full force by the time we uh, leave to go to Fort Worth. You start game prep for that tomorrow? Uh, start game prep tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have two weeks to uh, get into the game prep mode, which changes uh, when you come out of training camp where there's no school, no classes, and, you know, for a week or ten days or whatever it is, the kids can just, just – cut it loose and just play football, you know, uh, practice in the morning, meet in the afternoon, meet at night. Now you're on a uh, academic schedule where they have to get up, they have to go to class, they have tutoring, they have 
uh, meals, uh, all of those things, and, and football in the afternoon. And then at night, you know, you go back into your, your study halls and your different things like that. So getting accommodated to that where now, you know, you get back into a 20-hour rule uh, by the NCAA, which is mandated uh, during uh, the week of school. So it's a this is a big transition week for us to get back into school, get settled, so next week we can totally f focus and concentrate on TCU. I noticed on, the I guess, the practice schedule, Saturday's a mock game. I mean, just kind of describe the format. What do you want to get accomplished for that? Well, mock game is nothing but a rehearsal for the real game. Uh, you know, rather than going out and strimmaging, what we do is we rehearse everything from uh, how we uh, come out of the dressing room for pregame warm-ups, how we uh, stretch once we get to the stadium, how we um, make our substitutions. We do every situation you can think, you know, kick off after safety, punt after safety, uh, kick off return after safety, um, when to take a safety. Um, do we go for it on fourth down or do we punt? Do we got punt return on the field, defense on the field, offense on the field, Hail Mary at the end of the game, uh, uh, prevent defense that uh, stops the Hail Mary at the end of the game. And uh, it's kind of like a dress rehearsal, you know, for the last time. And you do that once, one time during training camp to make sure that, you know, you have kids that's never played. So now we're on the sideline. It's sideline management. You call our special teams up. Uh, you count to 11, you make sure you have 11 people out there. So that's what a mock game is. You just really, you and everything against air. One more for you. Tell me about Christian Jackman. What's he like? Christian Jackman. Uh, Christian Jackman is uh, a young man that's really focused. Uh, he's had a tremendous camp, had a great spring, you know, and uh, he's got some experience in the program. He came off that injury last year and did a great job for us. So, I'm excited uh, about Christian. He's worked extremely hard this summer and has gotten a lot stronger and uh, more durable. So, um, you know, we, we, we're going to keep him healthy, hopefully, and uh, hopefully he can have a good year for us. He was one of the better kicker punters in the league last year, and so I expect uh, great things from Christian this year. Adrian, you imagine those two will split duties? Yeah, some, some, and uh, Adrian is uh, very talented. You know, uh, the, the word raw uh, may be a term. He's still learning how to do certain things, but uh, athletically, I mean, he's got a, a lot of ability, and so um, he's a young kid. He had to be thrown in there last year as a true freshman, but right now, you know, he has uh, really been focused, and we've kept the competition live between those two. And like you said, we'll, we'll split a lot of time between those two in the three different areas of our kicking game. All right. All right.